you refer to in your book as the warfare state yes. versus the welfare state. The warfare state. Uh, the w welfare state is bankrupting us uh, because it costs two and a half trillion a year and it's going to rise dramatically mm -hmm. because of the baby boom retirement. Sure. The warfare state is just, you know, uh, adding more uh, kindling to the fire because mm -hmm. we don't need 800 billion dollars to defend ourselves. I mean, the Russians mm -hmm. spend 60. Okay, so why do we need to spend 800 billion on our uh, empire, as mm -hmm. I call it, when the Russians only spend 60? And you know, they don't even have a navy. Okay, uh, blue water navy. They're not going to invade New Jersey. What, what are they going to do? Drop some nukes on yeah. New York City? It's crazy. There is no threat from Russia, and frankly, the proof of the pudding is the Europeans. If they thought that Putin was some kind of latter-day Hitler and mm -hmm. was about ready to mobilize his army uh, across Europe, they would be spending more than 1% of GDP on defense. The Germans are wow. not pacifists. Mm -hmm. They've proved that several times in the last <laughs> century. They spend 1% of GDP, $40 billion, and they got an uh, economy mm -hmm. three times bigger than Russia. Are they afraid that uh, you know, the Red Army is going to be coming through the uh, Brandenburg Gates? Mm -hmm. No. So this oh. is all Washington uh, fear-mongering, because that's how they keep the budget mm -hmm. at these bloated levels, and that's how they keep the Congress pacified. Uh, and confused. Mm -hmm. Well, while we're talking about defense and while we're discussing all of the spending and expenditure, I want to uh, get your take on NATO. Now, I know yeah. that you've mentioned this before, and granted that the U.S. has the higher, highest expenditure when we're talking about um, their spending for NATO. Mm -hmm. Can you present your argument and give the viewing audience an understanding of where you sure. stand? Sure. I mean, what's the point of NATO? North Atlantic Treaty Organization set up in 1949 to contain the Soviet Union, which at that time was 400 billion people mm -hmm. and covered 400 million people covered most of Eastern Europe and all of the old Soviet Union. All of that is gone. They had 50,000 tanks on the so-called Central Front or Warsaw Front. All of those have been melted down for scrap. Mm -hmm. Okay. So NATO's mission was completed in 1991. They should have said, mission accomplished, disbanded NATO. At the time, actually, President the first Bush and Jim Baker, the Secretary of State, promised Gorbachev mm -hmm. in return for the unification of Germany, east and west, that NATO wouldn't expand one inch to the east. We have added 15 countries to NATO. Why do we have Slovenia? Why do we have Montenegro uh, in, um, in NATO? Well, what's the whole point of it? Uh, it? It is a complete relic, obsolete, and uh, a typical government agency that's in the business of uh, finding uh, missions and excuses mm -hmm. to continue to have a budget. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the it's actually NATO today is the biggest threat to peace in the world because they need a mission and they're noisy, mm -hmm. nosing around constantly everywhere trying to stir up trouble. And last but not least, uh, David, you dedicated this book to your 20-month-year-old yeah, yeah. uh, granddaughter. Right. Now, even today here in New York, we're seeing warmer uh, weather, temperatures, and rain, which doesn't seem that seasonable for the month of uh, January. So we have to worry about the climate. I don't know. I don't know. Three government. days ago, it was so cold you couldn't go outside. Okay? <laughs> exactly. So I don't think the problem is. A, I don't think the problem is mm -hmm. warming climate. I think the problem is a bankrupting country. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is uh, born and unborn taxpayers are going to be footing a bill for decades and decades and for the remainder of this century that will produce nothing for them. Mm -hmm. They're going to pay for our mistakes, for our wars, for, for all of the waste and inefficiency and pork barreling and, uh, uh, that goes on in Washington. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's a real tragedy. And um, I don't know how it can be stopped at this point. Mm -hmm. So do you have an invest investing uh, strategy for your granddaughter at this point? <laughs> well, uh, I would say until we get the bubble cleared, mm -hmm. uh, it would be best uh, to, to for whatever uh, funds, trust funds she's going to have, <laughs> not to put it mm -hmm. in the stock market. Okay, David. Well, thank you so much for... So I have to agree with him. David Stockman has a lot of great content on YouTube if you want to check that out. And uh, he's just bringing up the truth. And our military spending in the U.S. Uh, is a complete joke. And what's unfortunate is the younger generation, and he's correct, is going to have to pay for it. 
and eventually we're not going to be able to service this debt, which will be a huge burden on our, on our economy. And the U.S. dollar has been obviously the king in the global uh, currency for the world, but that could change, especially if the U.S. is unable to service its debt. And that's one reason why I'm looking at alternative investments like cryptocurrency to kind of hedge that risk and to prevent myself from getting completely wiped out if there is a huge uh, spike in inflation or just a huge um, massive devaluing of U.S. assets. Um, I've mentioned in a previous video that real estate can be a hedge against inflation. And uh, that's one reason why I invested in real estate, that if the dollar gets weaker and weaker, it really doesn't matter because the real estate prices will just keep going up. But at the same time, there could be stagnant growth in the U.S. And um, you're, what's nice is being an American, it's, you, you have access to foreign markets, which if you're watching financial channels, they're highly recommending looking at emerging markets. But cryptocurrency is just another option, another way to hold your wealth. And as you can look at this chart, it's been a terrible investment in 2017. Um, but I'm going to continue to buy uh, small amounts, not a large part of my portfolio, maybe 5-10%. Um, but I'm just holding it long term because I do want an alternative to the dollar and the fact that the Fed keeps printing out do money, dollars, and the fact the U.S. government uh, does not. It's just interesting that we got rid of a Democrat and we put in a Republican and the Republican outspends the Democrat. And the same thing happened with George W. Bush. Um, so for whatever reason, uh, Republicans are good at bringing up the debt and trying to claim that they're going to reduce it. But when they come in office, they just reduce taxes and make the debt skyrocket even more, uh, which is not a conservative philosophy that they're following. So... Uh, I think both parties are corrupt and they're both just taking money from the donor class. And that's one reason why the military industrial complex goes unchecked. But let me know your thoughts and comments on this and I will talk to you soon.